All right, these are the two fat quarters that I purchased at Walmart, and I'm gonna make these into a really sweet and simple Easter dress for Miss Posey. And because these prints are just a really pretty spring color and floral print, I'll be able to carry them over into the spring and she can wear them all season long. I'm going to cut my bodice out of this floral print and I'm going to turn my fat quarter this way. It's longer this way than it is this way. And I'm gonna put it down here at the bottom so that I have a good chunk of fabric left at the top because I wanna incorporate this print into the skirt as well. I'm gonna cut one out of this print and one out of a simple plain white material. So using my handy dandy pattern that I made forever ago, and you can check out a video on how to do this. I'll link it above and below. I went ahead and cut out both of my bodice pieces, one out of the floral and one out of the white. And I bought this big old package of random <laughs> ribbons at Michael's about a month ago. And I was just recently in Michael's and they still have these and they have some in brighter colors as well. So um, it's by Celebrate It, it's a 50 piece set and I wanna say it was $9.99, but I used a coupon and got it for about 40 to 50% off. And what I'm looking at here is this pretty little piece right here. I think that this is really pretty. And what I'm thinking of doing is grabbing my bodice and taking a section of this and cutting this off and pinning it into place on the center here and closing this up and this will just run down the center of the bodice and I think that's really cute. Okay, I've decided to stick with this ribbon here that I decided on earlier and also this sweet little braided kind of mint green, greenish blue on either side of this. So what I'm going to do is figure out where the center of this is and try to line this up nice and straight and pin it into place. And then I'm gonna go over to my sewing machine and actually stitch all the way down the center of this braided ribbon. So I'll need to look for some thread that is identical to this ribbon color so that it doesn't show up very much and do the same with this one. So I picked up this spool of thread. It is invisible, it's clear. And it even says on here, I read it somewhere, let's see. It's extra light, soft, strong, heat tolerant. So I don't really have any experience with this, but as you can see, if I lay it on top of this, you cannot see it. So I'm gonna go ahead and string this into my sewing machine and attach all these ribbons using this clear invisible thread and hopefully it works. I think it's pretty cool if it does. I have all my ribbons pinned into place, but as I was doing this, I thought of an idea that would probably make it easier to do when you're over at your sewing machine, especially when you're using really thin pieces of ribbon like this. I think a good idea would be to take a ruler and actually with a pencil or a fabric marking pen or chalk, draw out the line that you want to follow to keep it really straight and level. And then as you're sewing, attaching this um, ribbon on, you can make sure you're laying it on top of the line that you drew on the bodice. And that would help to ensure a nice, even straight level line. I'm gonna go attach these now using my invisible thread. All right, I'm back from the sewing machine and I stitched these on using the invisible thread. Um, this was my first experience using the invisible thread and I struggled a little bit with it. I'm not sure if it's because it's so slippery. I had trouble winding it on my bobbin. I had trouble with it hooking, kind of catching in weird places. But once I got all of that to work, it's really actually quite amazing. I can't see it anywhere. I've stitched all the way down the center of this one and this one and on the sides of this and it's completely invisible. Um, I also struggled a little bit with knowing what kind of tension to use on the sewing machine when using that thread because it is almost like, here's a little piece of it here, you can't even see, a little bit like fish line, but very fine. So there's definitely a learning curve. And if any of you have used it or have experience with it, comment down below because I would love some helpful tips. So I think that this looks lovely. I'm gonna trim off some of this excess ribbon on the ends. And then I'm gonna take my second piece of bodice material and put it on top of this one. 
So with the good side facing up, I'm going to take my white material and to put the good side facing down so that they're sandwiched together, good sides together, and line it up nice and easy, or line it up nice and even, and pin this all together. And now that I'm pinned into place, I'm going to stitch all the way around the outside of this bodice, but I'm going to leave the bottom portion open all the way across. So I'm gonna go do that using a quarter inch seam allowance and I'll be right back. Okay, we'll go ahead and flip this right side out now that we have it stitched together and we've clipped our corners and notched around our curves. If you want more information and details on how to sew a dog bodice portion of a dress together, check out the video that I'll link above and I'll also put it down in the description. This is looking really good. I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna bring it to the iron and press it really quickly. Okay, the bodice looks great. I'm really happy with this. So I'm gonna set it aside so we can start working on our skirt. So like I mentioned before, I'm gonna be using this plaid print as well as the leftover material from the bodice we cut out, this section here. So, Today, I want to show you a different way of making the hemline of the skirt. Instead of having our skirt just be straight across the bottom, we're going to do a really cute scalloped effect. The first step is going to be making a scalloped pattern. Now, this is a little pattern I made earlier today and tested it out. However, I decided that the circumference or the diameter rather of my circle is a little bit too small. This ended up being about a two inch diameter and I think it needs to be at least two and a half inches if not bigger. And that will depend on the size of your dog and just personal preference. But what I'm going to do is just find a circular shape that I can trace. Okay, and by find something circular, I'm serious. This is my almost empty Becca face powder. <laughs> so anything you have in your house that is something you can trace. So I measured this one and of course I can't find my <laughs> other tape measure, but this one is just about two and three quarters. So I think that this will be perfect. So what I'm going to do is with a regular piece of computer paper is line my round shape right down here at the very edge as well as all the way up against the side edge. And then I'm going to take a pencil and trace all the way around the bottom edge like so. And then I'm gonna take this shape and move it over, put this side up against the circle I already drew, the half circle I already drew, as well as the bottom edge of the paper. It's close to the same position as before and trace again about halfway up and repeat this. So all the way up against the side and the bottom and trace around. It looks like I can fit about four of these on my paper. Of course, it'll vary depending on the size of the circle you are tracing. Okay, as you can see here, I have this scalloped edge. So I'm going to take my scissors and cut it out to the point where they meet, right in this area. And I'm gonna cut all the way along this edge.
Okay, as you can see, I have cut all the way up and around and just try to get it as even as possible. But don't worry if it's not perfect. I've got some more pointy edges here and this might be a little higher on this side than this side, but try to get it in the same general area each time when you cut and try to have it as even as possible. But again, we are gonna be tracing this onto our fabric. It's only our pattern and we will be sewing the fabric together. So there's not going to be perfection, but the end result will be effective. So just get as many across as you can, even though our skirt will be much longer in width, we will just use this pattern and move it over in order to trace it onto our fabric. But I think this looks great and not in order not to be distracted by the draw lines I drew, I can flip it over and see here that this is great. And if you're happy with the pattern you made, you can always draw it onto cardstock or something a little more firm because it might be easier to use and also it'll hold up better over time so that you can reuse it. And this look is so adorable that you'll definitely want to redo it. Also, I'm going to take my scissors and just cut it across here because I really don't need all of this extra paper. If you've been following my channel for a while, you know that we have a couple different patterns going on now. Our original dog um, bodice pattern. We have one that we changed the waistline of that pattern in order to make a vest. We also have one that we elongated to make a coat. And now we have this pattern. And if you made any of the dog toys I showed you how to make, or the dog bone toy I showed you how to make, you probably have that pattern. And so we're growing quite um, a little pattern collection here. And it's good to just stick them all inside of a nice envelope or something like a big manila envelope and just tuck it away. Before we get to cutting out our skirt with this pattern, I want to point out that if you're wanting your final results to be the exact shape of this scallop we made, you would need to make the scallop about a quarter of an inch bigger. Now, I am happy with this because I know after losing about a quarter of an inch when I sew them together, I'll still have a good size scalloped. But think about that. You might want to add a little bit more, which means you would have to cut your pattern bigger than you actually want because we do lose some of that when we sew the skirt together. So um, I'm happy with mine though. So I'm going to move this aside and I'm going to pull over this plaid material, which is going to be one layer of my skirt. Normally, when I decide how much width I need in order to gather my skirt, I double the width of this bodice from side strap to side strap. But I'm not going to do that today because I want this scalloped border to be noticeable. I don't want it to be too gathered, but I still want some gathering. So I'm going to go with the length or the width of this back quarter, which is not as much as maybe I would like, but I think it'll be okay. But a good rule maybe for you to use is to take the width from side strap to side strap and then about half of that. So whatever it is, one and a half of this. But I'm gonna go with the width of this material, which I believe is about 22 inches. And so I also need Posey's skirt to be about six inches long. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it to six and a half inches long so I have seam allowance. So I have that one cut out and my second layer of skirt, I will want to be a little bit shorter. I'm going to go with four and a half. So that will be a two inch difference. Now you could cut out two of each one of these prints, but one of them will be on the bottom side and not seen, or you can cut out one of each print and then use white or plain material as the back piece. And that's what I'm going to do. Use white material. All right, I have all of my skirt material cut out, two of the white and two of the printed. These two are the same size and these are the two same size. So next it's time to cut out our scalloped border on the bottom of this. I will start with this one here. Now I'm gonna lay these good sides facing each other. Because this is the way we're gonna sew it together and if we cut it this way, they'll be nice and even and match up our skeleton borders. So get those to line up pretty good here on the bottom and lay it nice and flat. And if you want to, and it's probably not a bad idea to pin this material together 
in just a few places so it doesn't shift on us while we are cutting our shape out because I think it would probably be best to cut it out at the same time. So next I'm going to take my ruffled skirt pattern and on this end over here, I'm gonna line up my edge to the edge of the side of the material and also here to the very bottom. And I'm actually just gonna use a pencil or chalk or a pen, but I'm gonna use a pencil because it's here and trace around this shape. That way I can move the pattern aside afterwards and just cut it out. And when you get to the edge over here, just come up and around a bit like this. And then we'll pick up our pattern and we'll lay this last, this first scallop inside of the last scallop. So just follow the shape that you had and get this right here down to the bottom. Make sure it's all lined up the way you want. Right about there and then start tracing again. And just continue doing this until you get to the other end of your material on this piece that we cut out. Okay, I don't know how well you can see this, but I have traced the scallop border all the way around the bottom here, and I can see it, and that's what's important. You need to be able to see your markings that you made so that you can come in here and cut it out. And at this point, if you feel like you should add a few more pins down here at the bottom so nothing shifts, go ahead and do that now that our pattern's not in our way. And go ahead and cut this whole scalloped border out. So I've started cutting this scalloped border out, but it just occurred to me that it might actually be easier to bring this material that's been pinned together, white and, and printed together, over to my sewing machine. And because I have it all marked out, I can actually start to stitch and follow this line. Instead of cutting it out first and going up a quarter of an inch. If I do it this way or follow very close to it, it'll be easier and will maintain the actual size of the original pattern. And then when it's all stitched together, we can cut this extra material out of there. And I actually think that would be the easiest way. So my advice to you, if you're going to cut, go over to your sewing machine and stitch it before cutting it, is to actually take this scalloped border when you're tracing it and maybe move it up about a quarter of an inch from the bottom. That way you have plenty of room to follow your stitching when you're sewing. So, whereas I'm very close to the edge, but I'm gonna give it a go and see how it turns out. So I'm gonna bring this to my sewing machine and follow the trace lines that I drew all the way along the length of this scalloped edge. And I'll be right back. All right, I'm back from the sewing machine and I stitched all the way around these scallops. It was a little bit difficult because like I mentioned, I had mine all the way down to the edge. I definitely recommend bringing your pattern when you go to trace it at least a quarter of an inch up from the raw edge before tracing it. That way you have plenty of room to go around with your sewing machine. But the next step is to just cut all these little um, triangular extra spaces out and just don't cut into your actual stitch line but this should be fairly simple so I've gone ahead and cut out all the extra material without cutting into my stitch line but I wanted to point out I almost forgot to tell you that when I was going around and stitching these scallops I started at the top here and I stitched down this edge then went across and when I got to this side edge I stitched up the side leaving my quarter of an inch seam allowance so now I've cut all the excess fabric away. The last and a pretty important step is to take your scissors and right here where these all come to a point, go ahead and just clip right in there without actually cutting into your seam. So right up to the point, cause that will help it to be able to lay flat when we turn it right side out. Just be careful not to stitch or to cut into your seam. I used white thread and it's almost impossible to see where I'm cutting 
or where the actual stitch is, but I was able to do it. So that'll give it a little more movement. So now we are going to pull this right side out. And an important step from this point as we pull it right side out is to have your iron heated up because you will most definitely need to iron these scallops flat because as we push them right side out, they have a tendency to want to kind of pucker to the inside. So just push them all out with your fingers or whatever you need to use. And then we'll bring it over to the iron and start ironing these all nice and flat. So I'm gonna go do that, I'll be right back. Okay, how cute is this little scalloped edge? Now, some of mine are not perfectly rounded like this one here, and that might be because I didn't push the seam out well enough when I iron. So you can always take something like the end of this paintbrush I'm using here and push that seam out like that and then press it with the iron quickly to get the nice rounded edge. And also I struggled a little bit in some areas because I traced my pattern too close to the edge. But you guys will do better because you'll learn from my mistakes. <laughs> but another thing I wanna point out is, especially right here, this is really puckering right here. And this is most likely because I didn't cut that little slit on the other side far enough in. So if that's bothering you, simply turn it to the wrong side again, right in that area. And right in here, I'm gonna take my scissors and cut a little bit higher up right there. And it just releases that kind of tension or pooling. And then when I lay it out, this is definitely less puckery. It's kind of wrinkled, but I need to bring it back to the iron and press that flat. So if you see any other areas like that, just turn it right inside out again and clip it a little further into the point. But I am happy with this sweet little scallop border. So I'm going to do the same with the other printed material. I'm gonna use this smaller one and do it on this one just to see how I like it. And that's an idea for you. You can cut these scallops out any size you'd like. Really quickly, I wanted to show you that I did this one the right way. I put the pattern about a quarter of an inch from the bottom here, and I traced it on all the way along the length of this skirt. And now I can see my lines clearly and I can sew it without getting too close to this raw edge. So I'm gonna bring it over to the sewing machine, start up here, go all the way down and start following my trace lines all the way across till I get to this side. And as you can see here, this is only about a half a scallop, but I'm okay with that. Follow this along and then about a quarter of an inch from the edge, stitch up this side. Okay, I'm back and that was much easier to follow my trace line without having it so close to the bottom. Now I'm just gonna cut away the extra material and cut my little slits here without cutting into my seam and turn it right side out like we did before. Okay, that was much easier using the technique that I <laughs> should have done in the beginning. And so now I have both scalloped edges. One is a little bit smaller than the other. Okay, I'm back from the sewing machine. I ran the stitch across the top, but I need to gather it up a little bit more because I want it to fit between these two side straps from here to here. So I'm gonna gather these up a little bit more by pulling on these strings. Okay, I've got both of my skirts gathered to the width that I want. And so now I'm going to attach them to my bodice. And to do that, I'm gonna do what I always do by flipping this upside down, pinning it on, and then pinning this one on top of that and bring it to my, bringing it over to my machine and stitching across. More details on how to do that will be linked above and in the description. Okay, I've got it all stitched along, so flip it over. Everything's nice and secure. And look how cute this little scalloped edge is. I think that this is so cute. It's really not very hard. It's a little time consuming to, you know, cut the pattern out and sew along the trace lines, but I think it's worth it. I really, really like that. That is so cute and it's just unique. It's something a little bit different and it could be used any time of year, but I think it's especially perfect for springtime because it reminds me of little flower petals and I just love it. So I'm gonna flip this over and close up this back piece here, folding this over one time and pinning it into place, 
all the way around to the side straps, tucking those under and pinning them into place. And then I'm gonna run a stitch line all the way across here to close it up. Okay, I'm all closed up here on the back. It looks really nice and clean. And so now I am just gonna add some finishing touches to the waistband. You can go ahead and sew a ribbon across here if you wanna cover up your stitch line, but I think mine is not very obvious, and I'm kind of just liking the simplicity and the flow of these two fabrics together, so I'm not gonna put something here to break up the waistband. But I am gonna add some bows. So these packs here are from the Dollar Tree. I picked them up a few weeks ago. They're two little hair clips, and I think that I wanna use both of these bright pink ones because they have they pull out the pink here and up in the floral print as well. So I'm gonna pull these off and show you what to do with them. So what we need to do is remove this little duck bill clip here. And if you open it up, you can see where the ribbon is wrapped around the inside of this. You can take a little razor, your scissors and cut that. I'm using the seam ripper and that seems to work pretty good. It went right through. And so now I can just slip my fingers in here and pull that off. You wanna be careful because you don't wanna deconstruct this whole bow. You just wanna get this clip off of there. So that's the trickiest part, but usually it's not actually that hard. Okay, see, it came right off, but this is left open right now. So you can glue that back into place or when you're sewing it to your dress, which we're gonna do by hand, you can be sure to run your needle through both of these pieces of ribbon and then onto the dress several times to fasten it back into place. So I'm gonna remove this one as well. Okay, I have both of my bows removed from the clips and the way I want to place these are right here on either side of this center ribbon here. I think that these will be sweet when it's wrapped around Posey's body to have two little bows there. And of course, you don't have to do that. You could do one or one to the side. You could place this wherever you want. But I just like this idea. I think it's kind of cute. Reminds me of little pigtails or something, and I just think it's sweet. So I'm gonna hand stitch these on to each side of this center embellishment. All right, so I've got my bows attached, and all I have to do now is attach my Velcro closures to my side and neck straps, and then we can try it on Miss Posey. Okay, we have little Miss Posey here. Yes, we do. And we're gonna try on her new Easter spring dress. <laughs> you guys, it doesn't matter what the dress looks like. I think it looks adorable on her no matter what. But I must admit that this little scalloped skirt is adorable. I can't wait to make more of these. I think it turned out just lovely. If I'm going to be picky, I can see that there's a few puckers here in this little scallop skirt. So I must not have cut up high enough on the inside. This one is laying down much better. So be aware of that when you're making your scallop skirt. But this just is lovely. I think it's so cute. I think it turned out really cute and I hope that you guys will give it a try. Maybe get out your sewing machine, pick up some sweet spring material and make your dog an Easter dress or a nice springtime dress. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and share it with anybody you think may enjoy it. Thanks for watching.